I have an illustration of an alarm clock here. To trace this illustration, I am going to use a combination of three tools, all of which you already know. The pick tool, the bezier tool and the shape tool. Let's get started. First, let me lock this illustration. The idea is to prevent it from moving about as I trace it. To lock the illustration, I right click on it and select Lock Object. Now it's secure in its place. I began with the innermost outline of the clock using the ellipse tool. I'll duplicate this ellipse and extend it on the outer outline of the clock. Next, let's trace the years of the clock. I'll use the Bezier tool to trace the outline and the Shape tool to give it a proper shape. Watch as I do the same for the knob and the handle of the clock. These nodes and arrowheads allow you to click, drag and form the desired shape. That's a Bezier tool for you. Now for the hands of the clock with same tool, Bezier. Let me move the outline a little. Some parts still remain to be traced.
Similarly, I trace the legs of the clock. One leg is done. I'm not going to trace the other leg all over. Instead, I'll duplicate it and flip it. First, I pick it up using the pick tool. Then, I duplicate it by dragging and keeping the left mouse button pressed. Now to flip it, I click on flip option from the property bar. The only tool that helps in proper tracing is the Bezier tool. Recall that each tool has its own unique property bar options. The leg of the clock is done. Now for these visual indicators of the alarm sounds. That's done. That completes the tracing of the clock. Very similar to how you trace on paper, wasn't it? I moved the tracing here. But there's no proper outline right now. Just select the entire tracing and then select black color from the color bar. Now the outline is visible. Now to fill color into the illustration. Watch as I select the component and then the color that I want. For different shades of color, yes, you remembered it right. I can use the Fountain Fill tool. It is commonly referred to as the Gradient. I want to add a dash of color to every component. See this year? Why is it sticking on the clock? I want to push it behind the clock. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Shift plus page down. Done. Now simply duplicate this year and table to the other side. The other year is ready. In the same way, I am going to quickly color the knob, the handle screws and the hands of the clock. Does it look good? Mm. Now for these vibration indicators. These arrows are very thin. I want to thicken them a little. Now watch. I select it first, then go to Arrange, Convert Outline to Object. Yes. I am converting the outline to an object, which means I can now rotate it or skew it to give it a shape of my choice. 
See that? It has nodes and arrowheads similar to the Bezier tool. The biggest advantage with technology is that you don't have to repeat your actions for creating similar objects. Simply do it once, duplicate, flip and rotate until you get what you want. Now for the numbers of the clock using the text tool. If you remember, our base illustration has all the numbers. Too much of clutter that was. I am cutting down on that. But what is important here is that you must place these numbers at their accurate positions on the clock. I will come back to this in a while. Now I am going to make the minute markings. The shape and bezier tools help me create a line which will be the minute marking. Now let's look at the placement of the minute marking. Watch very carefully, just the steps. I select this marking, then I select the object that is the clock itself. I press C to center horizontally and E to center vertically from the keyboard. That brings the marking to the center of the clock. In other words, we have aligned the minute marking to the center of the object. And how did we do that? Use the keyboard shortcut CE. Remember, use the shortcut CE to align the center of one object with the center of another object. Got that? Now let's move the minute marking the position 12. Duplicate and move it 30 degrees to the left. Why 30 degrees? Because there are 12 markings of 30 degrees on a 360 degree circle. Press Ctrl plus R from the keyboard to repeat these markings at every 30 degree interval. The numbers 12, 3, 6 and 9 were also positioned in the same way. The illustration is now done. Time to save in the CDR format as always. You know it by now.